dear member of the jury, I would like, first of all, to thank you for having accepted to participate to this defense. For me today, it's a great honor to share with you this work and defend my PhD thesis. PhD thesis entitled Fast Dynamic Response and Failure of Masonry Structure of Non-Standard Geometry Subjected to Blastman. This is a joint work between the Ecole Centrale des Nantes, Université Paris-Saclay, Ecole des Ponts, and the civil engineering enterprise en Gironde. Let me first start by contextualizing this work. And in doing so, I need to admit that actually everything started well before this PhD thesis with a CNRS project, Cathedral Durable, in which under the supervision of Professor Vanucci and Professor Stefano, uh, we started tackling the preservation of masonry structure subjected to explosion, and in particular, monumental one. Why this is important? Well, in our history, we have so many historical heritage structure that have been repeatedly exposed either to accidental or deliberate blast. The Parthenon, four century ago, Rain Cathedral, the archeological site of Palmyra, Al Nuri Mosque, and one month ago, Gazzacensus Cathedral. Now in Citing all these events, I cannot prevent myself from inciting also two other accidents that this time didn't involve explosion, but fire. I want to refer to the fire that happened in uh, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and the one that happened this year here in Nantes uh, involving Tila Cathedral. So there is the need of preserving masonry structure that belong to our historical heritage against that scenario. How we can do that? Well. Before, we need to understand the fast dynamic response and failure of this kind of structure when subjected to explosion. Then we can evaluate the resistance of real structure. And finally, implement action to protect the existing building and design new one. But there is a problem. The problem is that experiments and modern investigation currently are restricted and restricted only to plan a structure like the masonry wall that you can see in here. This is a problem because in historical heritage structure, we are dealing with masonry structure of, as I define in here, no standard geometry, meaning dealing with structural elements that uh, are different from masonry wall, like bolts, arches, domes, columns, etc. So in this work, in this PhD thesis work, we tackle the preservation of such kind of structure against explosion. And we will see in here, first of all, uh, an investigation of the dynamic behavior and failure mode of no standard geometry structural elements subjected to explosion. Then we will pass to large scale modeling approaches to uh, investigate the response of real existing large masonry structure. And finally, we will also tackle the need to set uh, the basis for a new kind of experiments in our do scale environments. Now, due to the limited time that I have at my disposal, I won't have time to uh, go uh, into the, the technical part of this work. I will give you a panorama of the main results and development, but I hope that I will have the, the, cho the chance to go into the technical part in the question section of this work. So first of all, let me introduce the main actor. So explosion, blast flow. When we are talking about explosion, well, I think everyone will agree with me. We have in our mind these kind of images. Beirut, August 4, 2020. A fire involving almost three kilotons of uh, ammonium nitrate released an energy that was comparable with the detonation of one kiloton of TNT. This causes hundreds of that and hundreds of thousands of people left homeless. When we are dealing with explosion, we are dealing with fast dynamic release of energy under the form of compressed gas that's rapidly released in the ambient atmosphere and originate shock wave. Now imagine that at the same point at which we are looking at the explosion, we use a pressure transducer to measure the pressure at this point. What we are gonna measure and record is the so-called incident overpressure. It's an overpressure, so it's a differential pressure. It's the pressure due to the explosion minus the atmospheric one. 
And what we are going to record is the plot that you can see below, where we have actually, as soon as the shock waves arrive, we record an almost instantaneous increase uh, in the overpressure. Then we have an almost exponential decay, that is the so called positive phase. And then we record pressure below the atmospheric value, that is the negative phase. Now, imagine that instead of having uh, our pressure transducer, we have a structure at the same distance. So we will have the detonation of the same amount of explosive. Then we will have the propagation of incident shock waves. And at a certain point, the shock wave will strike the targets, giving us uh, fluid structure interaction phenomena and mostly in this case, reflection phenomena. So if we now we record the pressure within a structure, what we're going to get is the so-called reflected overpressure that you can see in here, uh, the blue curve. And if we compare this reflected overpressure with the one that we were measuring before, the incident one is the gray curve. Well, we can find that the reflected overpressure can be far greater than the incident overpressure, can be far greater up to a factor that is equal to 30. So it's important to be aware of this kind of phenomena as they will give us finally the result of the reflected overpressure acting on our structure. How we can do that? Well, we can use empirical model that is best fit interpolation of existing experimental tasks that will give us the main blast parameter to characterize the load from the knowledge of the scalar distance that I define in here as Z, that is the ratio of the standoff distance R with respect to the cubic roots of the explosive wave, W. And now from the knowledge of this scalar distance, we are able to recreate the uh, reflected overpressure that is acting on a target. Now, in most of the cases, such kind of model give us safe estimation, but not, not, not always. And in those cases, we need to move towards more detailed description of the phenomena that are taking place. And I want to uh, make reference in here to what I define as physics based model, that is, that is fluid dynamic modeling of shock wave. Well, when we use this model, we rely either on a capillary and Lagrangian scheme or arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian ones, in which we model the explosive source, the structure, and the medium through which shock wave propagates, in our case, air. As you can see on the right with an example, these kind of methods allow us to model the propagation of shock waves and their interaction with the structures. Nevertheless, they comes with a price that is uh, extremely prohibitive computational, uh, computational cost. So in this work, we make the assumption of using by preference empirical model, but we will, need, we will use when needed physics based one for comparison purposes. Let's pass to the second main actor that is Masary. The mechanical behavior of Masary is governed by the mechanical behavior of its components, the units and the joint. It's governed as well by the interaction or bond between these components, by the stereotomy and by the loading condition. What we know from the experimental evidence is that in most of the cases, and in particular for historical structure, we are dealing with Masary joint that have a reduced strength uh, when compared to the strength of the Masary block. That is why we see that usually failure starts at the Masary joint and propagate through them. So let's continue by making some assumptions. First of all, we will assume that the Masary block have infinite strength. Second, we will decide to scale down all the inelastic behavior of the Masary to the Masary joints. Of course, these hypotheses are a posteriori verified in all investigation and analysis that I will present to you today. We also assume that the compressive strength of the Masary joint is infinite. Why? Well, because we are dealing with Masary and Masary is a zero material. As, as, as many geo material, it presents small tensile strength with respect to the compressive strength. Then we are dealing with a material that um, presents strain softening behavior and non-associative non gliding. That is non-associative plastic prolude. That is, when sliding through the Masary joint, we do not record any separation along their nor normal direction. This phenomenon is extremely important and needs to be taken into account. Then we are dealing with Masary subjected to fast dynamic excitation that arise from explosion. From the experimental evidence, 
that is extremely limited when, we, when dealing with masonry, we know that as we increase the rate of the loading of the material, we increase the, um, uh, we record an increase of the material strength. We need to say, although that for the application at which we are interested of large masonry structure, well, these effects are pretty limited and they will give us an amplification of the material strength up uh, to a factor that is equal to 2, 2.3 in the worst case scenario. So we make the assumption of neglecting such dynamic effect and any other viscoelastic effect because they will, this will give us conservative estimation of the material strength. Let's now pass to investigate the dynamic behavior and failure modes of masonry structure. Let's split the problem into two. First, we know that the pass dynamic response of masonry structure may involve rigid body mechanism. As you can see on the top, where we have uh, the rocking and overturning response of a masonry wall subjected to an explosion. And at the bottom, where we have the rocking response of a masonry arch, this time not subjected to an explosion, but to earthquake excitation. Let's focus on these rigid body failure modes. So let's assume a simplified model. Let us consider a rectangular rigid block subjected to a blast load. And we can prove that uh, for slender block, meaning block with an angle of slenderness alpha that is less or equal than 20 degrees, well, the initiation of a rocking motion rather than a gliding motion is critical. So let's focus for a moment only on rocking motion. So we can write down the equation of motion of the system that I present to you in here in their dimensionalized and linearized form. Actually, this equation uh, admits a closed form solution that you see in here in the, uh, under the shape of a phase portrait. On the left, we have the um, um, effect of the solely positive phase of the blast load, while on the right, we have the combined uh, effect of positive and negative phase of the blast load. Now, from knowing the uh, analytical solution to this problem, well, we can um, define the overturning domain and find the overturning domain, but more importantly, we can um, define a new concept that I define in here as critical standard distance. That is the minimum distance between an explosive source and a given rectangular block that is needed to avoid the toppling, the overturning of that block. You can see actually this critical standard distance on the rise uh, in a design charge uh, has function of the quantity of explosive W and this slenderness angle alpha. Now such a concept, the critical standard distance may have important application. But before going towards those applications, we ask ourselves if this simplified model is enough. It is capable of taking into account uh, the main physics of the problem that we are meant to study. Let's look at it. Let's compare the simplified analytical model with the failed numerical simulation. Let's account before for the fact that the response of the rigid block, it's in general, a combination of rocking, sliding and uplifting motion in a three dimensional space. Then let's account for the fluid structure interaction phenomena, reflection, diffraction of the shock waves using physics based model. Now, what we see in here is that the prediction of the analytical model give very good agreements with respect to the numerical detailed simulation and most of the cases they give us uh, and more importantly they give us a safe estimation of the resistance of the system we are defining here failure as overturning then we can even more move towards and going to through comparison with existing experiments existing experiments of targets subjected to blast loads to explosion and so we see once more that our model, the orange curve, um, give us very good agreement with the uh, numerical, uh, with the experimental uh, result and always safe estimation of the resistance of the structure. So we can use the simplified model to investigate, of course, masonry structure, as it is the case in this work, but also for design masonry blast wall. Uh, that is barriers that we define um, in the proximity of vulnerable um, buildings, but they can also be used to define a protective perimeter around museum artifacts to protect them against explosion. This is actually an application that we made uh, and give us a publication, uh, but unfortunately I won't have the time to talk about this. So let's, let's be focused. We have a, a simplified um, a 
analytical model that allow us to study the rigid body failure mechanism. Well, there is a problem. The problem is that in general, the response of mass restructure, in particular those of no standard topology, may involve combined in plane and out of plane deformation regime. So how we can study this kind of structure? Well, we need to move towards more detailed description, a mesoscale description in here. So we will take, it advan take advantage of the discrete element methods in which we model the discrete nature of the muscle, meaning an assembly of muscle block that interact one with the other through zero thickness interfaces. Now, retaining the assumption that we made before, the muscle block will be uh, assumed to have infinite strength, so linear elastic, and the muscle joint, the interfaces, will deal also with the inelastic softening behavior of the material with a more column uh, criteria. Now we need still, even if it's an extremely detailed uh, modeling approach, we need still some benchmarking. To do this benchmarking, of course, we need to compare uh, the numerical model with experimental tests. We make the choice of using existing experimental tests, but as I said before, existing experimental tests only deal with flat masonry uh, structure. Whoa. So in here, you find a masonry wall that has been subjected to two different quantitative explosives. We can then build our discrete element model with an appropriate discretization and the material parameter. Material parameter that have been selected from the literature survey are typical parameter for masonry with a known associated sliding behavior. And I would like to emphasize at this point that no fitting of this material parameter has been made a posteriori on the numerical result that I'm going to show you. So let's go to the comparison. For the first test, the smaller quantity of explosive, we see that the discrete element methods model give us relative error as small as 3% with respect to the experimental test. Then we can move towards to the second test where we have a much larger explosive quantity. And we see that the discrete element methods uh, predict the formation of a bridge. And this same bridge is recovered and of course uh, is measured also in the experimental test. So we can say that the model that we have in here is able to capture with high fidelity the dynamic response and failure of masonry structure when subjected to explosion. At this moment, I would say we can start to play. Like we could ask ourselves, what does it happen if instead of having non-dilatant masonry joint, we had dilatant associative uh, masonry joint? Well, in that case, for the first test, we will have deflection that are 40%, the one that are obtained in the, um, in the experimental test. And for the second test, assuming uh, an associated dilatant behavior for the masonry joint mean that we fail in predicting the partial collapse of the structure. This means that non-associativity is associated with a decrease of the overall resistance of the structure. And that's why it's important to be taken into account. Then, then we can pass to study the uh, response of non-standard geometry, like arches, semicircular arches. And in here, you find a study of the resistance of the structure when subjected to explosion as function of the slenderness ratio. Then we ask ourselves, what is the influence of the shape of the arch? What does it happen if instead of having a semicircular arch, I had a segmented one or a pointed one? Well, what the numerical simulation give us is that, say to us, is that the semicircular arch is the most, uh, most vulnerable um, structural element among the other. That's why when we will pass in studying balls, meaning three-dimensional structure, we will make the assumption of studying barrel balls, that is semicircular balls, instead of segmented or pointed as you can see in here, because by studying a barrel bolt, we will find the resistance of the system that is a lower bound of the resistance of bolt made with the other three types of arches. So in here, you find the discrete element model of the structure. On the right, you can find the deflection uh, due to different uh, quantitative explosives at the bolt key. And then we can, uh, for example, um, estimate the influence of tensile strength and cohesion of the mass joints. What we find is that their influence is extremely reduced. What does it mean? Well, it means that even if the strain rate effect would have been important, that is not the case, but even if they would have been important, well, in that case, take into account for the amplification 
of the material strengths due to the high strain rate, well, would have given us to us very limited um, differences uh, as far as it concerns the, the dynamic structural response. Then we can investigate once more the influence of non associativity of the sliding behavior. We retrieve similar results as before for the muscle involved, and we record as well a reduction of the material stresses when we are dealing with non dilatant muscle joints. Then we can start to study the influence of the building block size. What does it happen if I have the same bolt with the same thickness, but I change the dimension of the block? I take half the size or twice the, si the size I was considering before. The numerical solution give us uh, and show us that the larger the block are, the higher the resistance of the structure is. This means that there is an internal length proper to the masri that needs to be characterized. And then we see that the influence of the non-associativity of the sliding behavior still matters, uh, at least for the size of the muscle block that we investigated in here. Then we can move towards more complex structural elements like crossbows. In here, actually, you find the, uh, a 3D laser scanner of the uh, Collège de Verdun uh, in Paris that we use to make a simplified model of the same bolts uh, for which we model just a quarter of the structure to contain the otherwise prohibitive computational cost. And in here, I present you the structural response due to the detonation of 18 kilograms of TNT. So we have this extremely detailed approach to investigate the response to explosion of structural elements, uh, masonry structural elements. Now, at the end of the day, although we are interested in investigating the resistance and the response of existing real large masonry structure. And using an approach like this is extremely prohibitive and is not actually possible with the uh, actual computational resources. So we need to move towards large scale modeling approaches. The main idea is to pass from a discrete description of the material up to a continuum one. That is, well, we have the masonry in discrete in nature. Well, it can be seen as a quasi periodic repetition of a unit cell that I'm calling in here as representative elementary volume, RAV. Now, through uh, upscaling and homogenization technique, we can come up with an equivalent homogeneous element of this REV. And from knowing the material response, the material parameter of these equivalent homogeneous elements, we can come up by studying the homogeneous counterpart of the model that was discrete in nature at the very beginning. We will see two different, I would say, options in doing this. First of all, we will develop a simplified engineering-oriented upscaling approach that is based on very simplifying assumption, but this is made uh, with the aim of having a computationally uh, efficient uh, approach that can be used at least for preliminary study in civil engineering enterprises for investigate the response of um, real masonry structure to explosion. Then we can move towards more detailed description that is multi-scale analysis. And in this case, we will fo focus more in the development of reliable consistency model, model using artificial neural networks. So in here, you find the two different paths. Let's focus first with the, uh, on the first. So engineering oriented upscaling approach. We will take it advantage for the linear elastic behavior of the homogeneous material at the macro scale of the theoretical developments by Cechi and Sam. Then we will assume an isotropic formulation for the material that is introduced on an energetic basis. And as far as concerned the inelastic behavior, we are gonna take advantage by uh, on the um, brittle cracking model developed first by Hilderborg for concrete. Now, as being developed for concrete, so we need, first of all, a calibration for masonry that has been made using existing experimental tests and by assuming that failure still happen only at the masonry joint. And then through a simplified upscaling procedure, we can define the material parameter of the homogeneous elements. That is, we compute actually at the micro scale or meso scale, the energy that is dissipated due to fracture at the masonry joint then we can compute the energy dissipated at the macro scale. And by assuming and imposing their equivalency, we can find and come up with the uh, material parameter characterizing the inelastic behavior 
at the macro scale. Let's now pass to actually compare this model with the existing experimental test and the discrete elements uh, method result we have seen before. So in here, you find the response of for the um, simple flat mass revolt subject to the first smaller quantity of explosive. So you can see that the error of the simplifying approach, uh, relative error, are approximately 7%. Uh, they give us most of the time safe estimate in terms of the deflection, how to play in deflection of the wall. And they are characterized by extremely reduced computational time. That is 0 0.03, the time required to run the same simulation, but using a discrete element model. Well, we start to see that the free oscillating response, although on the right, differ, differs from the discrete element model. And we can recover exactly the same result when we go to the second test with a much higher uh, explosive quantity, where yes, the, disc, the uh, simplifying uh, finite element model is able to capture the formation of a bridge, but of course is not uh, uh, quantitatively comparable with the one of the discrete element model that we the experiment. This is due to the fact that we uh, neglect any plastic and frictional mechanism in our simplified model. This is even more evident when we pass to more complex masonry structure, like the variables, in which we have a really strong coupling between the in-plane and out-plane motion of the structure. And you can see, of course, when we compare the DAM and FAM uh, model, well, they have a uh, really high difference, even if the uh, simplified finite element model is able to give us safe estimate in terms of the resistance of the structure. This is also evident when we pass to investigate the building of size effects they are not well uh, captured by the finite element model. As I was saying, the limitation are, of course, the cause of this. That is the absence of mode second fracture, plastic frictional mechanism, as well as associativity. And due to the fact that as we are using an homogeneous equivalent um, medium, that is a classical sheet medium, well, the lack of an internal length of the material. Nevertheless, we can use this simplified model to investigate and perform preliminary study of the resistance and behavior of large non-standard mass structure subjected to explosion. And here I show you an example with the failure of the main bolt, as you can see in here. Well, at this point, we can ask ourselves, can we do better? Yes, we have done this simplified model, but can we do better move towards more detailed description? Yes, we can. We can use multi-scale analysis. That is, we have our problem at the macro scale, meaning our large structure made of masonry with no standard geometry. And we will apply, of course, some forces or eventually some displacement. And at the end of the day, what we will need, of course, is the link between an incrementing strain and the incrementing stresses. That is the constitutive behavior. Now, this constitutive behavior, constitutive law, link, can be retrieved by solving a boundary value problem at the micro scale, at the, at, at the level of the REV, at, the, at each gauss point of our macro structure. Now, these models are extremely detailed, but as you can imagine, their computational cost is extremely high and prohibitive for the application at which we are interested. So we can come uh, up with an idea that is using machine learning methods to um, actually learn the uh, constitutive link between an incrementing strain, uh, in strain and an incrementing stress uh, at our place. In that case, we can use the, um, the uh, solution of the boundary value problem of uh, the, uh, at the macro scale and, and train our artificial neural networks or directly um, without the boundary value problem, but really that link the constitutive loop. In that case, we will have a machine learning method. I will focus more on artificial neural networks that will learn at our place the constitutive link. Now, this is a method that has been already the, um, employed in the last 10, 15 years. And uh, it's uh, used uh, most of the time, what are defining here as standard artificial neural networks, INN, that is the state of the art of artificial neural network for constitutive modeling. They are universal approximator but they need large amount of training data. And more importantly, they do not guarantee us that the prediction of the network will respect the model dynamic. That's why in this work, we focus on the development of a new class of artificial neural networks that are defined in here as thermodynamic based artificial neural networks or TAN 
that's guaranteed by definition the thermodynamic consistency of the prediction. And as a result, what you obtain is that the, the TAN actually need much less training data and they represent robust and filtering operator to noise on training data. So I present you in here um, an application to predict elastoplasticity with softening for a material that we know, a Mises material. So you have at the top the uh, data that we generated and then the training of the neural network. Now we can pass to make and ask him to make prediction of the link, uh, the constitutive link. So you find on the left prediction that are made inside the training domain in which the artificial neural network has been trained and on the right beyond the training domain. I present you in here the uh, standard the state of the art of artificial neural networks that are in gray and the TAN, the one based on thermodynamics that are in orange. As you can see, the standard NN may predict wrong strength and dissipation. And in most of the cases, they do not even respect the first principle of thermodynamics. So at this point, I will present to you the application with considering Masri. But unfortunately, I didn't have the time to develop this point during this PhD thesis. So nevertheless, we, we ask ourselves, what is the next step? Well, the next step is to implement these artificial neural networks based on thermodynamics into finite element code. So in that case, it means that we will need a certain point somehow to implement and, com and, compute, and, and compute the elastoplastic matrix of the material. But since we do not know the constitutive law, well, how we can solve this problem? Well, it's pretty simple when using artificial neural networks. Actually, we need only to ask to the artificial neural networks the derivative, the partial derivative of an output that is the incrementing stress with respect to an input that is the incrementing strain by using and um, by using the uh, auto diff uh, feature of neural networks. So on the left, you can see the prediction of the Jacobian, the elastoplastic matrix made by the neural networks in gray, the uh, standard NN and in orange, the new based on thermodynamics. As you can see below the last plot, um, Standard INN, when R uh, has to make prediction beyond the training range, may predict hardening instead of softening. So I apply this to, to model three elastoplasticity uh, material with softening and hardening, the uh, kinematic one. The perspective, of course, is the implementation of the uh, thermodynamic artificial neural networks without any changes to Masri material using micromechanical simulation. And of course, the implementation into finite elements uh, codes, but has the prediction of the Jacobian of the uh, thermodynamic artificial neural networks are extremely uh, good. Well, we expect a quadratic convergence in at least in implicit formulation. At this point, I would like to pass to the last step that is experiments. Now, we know the experiments well, are, are, are of tantamount importance because they allow us to verify, or in most of the case, to falsify existing models and improve our knowledge. But as I said before, they are extremely uh, limited in number when we are dealing with Masri subjected to exclusion. And uh, what we do in, in the literature, in the existing literature, is to perform field tests, full scale tests. And as you can imagine, the cost of such kind of tests is extremely high. And mm, what is important is that we have, um, I, um, I would say, a um, big issue uh, related to safety because, well, we have a large Masri structure. We will need to investigate the response to explosion. So we will need at least, a, um, I would say, a medium quantity of explosive. So one solution could be to use reduced scale tests. Now, in that case, in principle, we will reduce the uh, uh, size of the, uh, of, the, um, of the prototype uh, at, the, at, the, at the full scale up down to, the, uh, to, to a reduced scale that is the model. So they will be cheaper. And uh, most of the cases, at least what we, are, um, we assume, is that we will, of course, uh, reduce the amount of explosive. And so hopefully the, um, the loading acting on our structure and so they will be safer. Now to do this, we need similarity theory and scaling loads. But actually we have already everything in the literature. We have the so-called hopkinson kranz scaling load for which by defining a geometric scaling lambda from the full scale prototype 
down to the reduced scale model, well, we scale down the load at least in pressure by a factor that is equal to one. A factor equal to one means that actually we do not scale at all the pressure. So it means that if you use this scaling law, well, we won't have safer experiments. And then using this scaling law, we need to prescribe the density of the material that we use in the model or the uh, mass of the system. And furthermore, they are not valid for rich dynamic problem like rocking, um, uplifting, sliding, all those rigid body failure modes we were looking at before. So there is, before uh, passing to experiments, the need to develop new scaling law. And that's what actually we have done in this work by developing new scaling law for the fast dynamic response and failure of muscle structures subjected to blast. As you can see in here, by defining a geometric scaling lambda, as we decrease this, the uh, new scaling law, the orange curve, allow us to reduce the pressure as well as the um, blast impulse that is not comparable with the uh, Hopkinson scaling um, law that we were seeing before. So at this point, we go even farther by okay, asking ourselves if these scaling law are valid for rigid sliding and uplifting motion. Well, they are valid. The numerical simulation allow us to say that they are valid at least to a first approximation. Then we can pass to investigate more complex structure like multi-drum columns subjected to blast load. And even in this case, we found that the, uh, the scaling law allow us to uh, predict um, the uh, response of the uh, prototype from studying the model, even if we see that we need a certain point to include richer dynamics like wobbling motion. So we can use this scaling law to design preliminary experiments of masonry structures subjected to explosion. At this point, I would like to, to pass to the conclusion and perspective of this work. So I would like to recall the main objective. So first of all, we would like to, we, 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 we wanted to extend the current knowledge on the dynamic response and failure of masonry structures subjected to explosion. Then to develop modeling strategies that can be used to investigate the behavior of existing building and to design new ones. And then set the basis for designing new experimental tests in a reduced scale environment that will allow us to verify or falsify derived model and theoretical assumptions. So as far as concerned the main finding, if I can try to resume them, well, I would say that the structural response of a Amazonic structure subjected to explosion can be either monolithic or consists of um, rigid body failure modes or be characterized by complex deformation regime. As far as concerned monolithic uh, failure mechanism, we have proved that overturning is the predominant one. For complex deformation regime, the discrete element method simulation shed light on the behavior of different structural masonry elements and their um, um, failure modes. Then they allow us to uh, assess the limited influence of strain rate effects and to assess as well the influence of several micromechanical parameters, such as the non-sensitivity of the sliding behavior and the building block size effect. Then we move towards large-scale modeling approaches and in that case, we develop simplifying engineering oriented finite element approach as practical tool for preliminary analysis as they provide in the application that we investigate the safe estimation of the resistance of the structure that can be used in civil engineering enterprise to have first results of real mass structures subjected to explosion. Nevertheless, we highlighted as well that such kind of simplified upscaling approaches may have important limitations. So in that cases, we can pass, in those cases, we can pass to multi-scale analysis, but their computational time is extremely high and prohibitive for our application. So we can think to use computational announcement by machine learning methods. And on these points, we focus on the development of a new class of thermodynamic based artificial neural networks that we found completely surpass the standard framework of machine learning methods for constitutive modeling. Then we pass to the final step, experiments. There are at present partially very limited in number because full scale experiments are extremely difficult to be performed and reduced scale uh, tests lack of appropriate scaling law. So we solve this issue by developing new scaling law for masonry structures subjected to explosion. And this scaling law can be used for the design of preliminary experiments on masonry structure. 
As far as concerned the perspective, the first one is the implementation of thermodynamics based artificial neural networks in multi scale analysis to model the Maser material. But not only, because the framework on which this thermodynamic based artificial neural network rely is thermodynamics and strain rate independency. So the class of material to which these can be applied is extremely wide. Then the second perspective is to use this scaling level to perform laboratory tests that will allow us to verify and falsify derived model and assumptions. These two steps will be directly implemented in the frame of two projects. One is BLAST, BLAST Load on Structure, is a connect along project financed by Pays de la Loire and Entre Metropole. And on the other way around, the ERC grant, Copeway, controlling earthquake. So I would like to conclude by showing a list of publication where we have eight um, journal papers that have been uh, accepted and published um, and one that is under review uh, currently. Actually, we have the one on thermodynamic space or artificial neural networks that uh, just got accepted at uh, Journal of Mechanics and Physics of Solids last week. And then we have uh, nine conference proceedings as well as three technical reports. Now, with the background of this picture of Nant Cathedral the, the day uh, it went on fire, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to, you, to, to hearing your questions. Thank you.